Please rise for the invocation by Reverend Gerard from retired United Methodist Church. Let us pray. Dear Creator God, you send the rain and the sunshine, and the earth brings forth its bounty. So we, who are also created by you, enjoy the fruit of the earth, which not only sustains us, but enables us to use our gifts to create with you better places to live in. Thank you for the blessing of this city, created through your providence and the industrial use of the gifts of the people of this community and beyond. Continue to watch over the people of Hickory as we seek a better future together. We especially pray for those who lead and serve in our city government, those who set policy and plan, those who protect life and property, those who provide safe water and sanitation services, those who offer citizens opportunities for recreation, sport, and art, those who enhance our learning and connect us as a community. May all done here tonight and in our city government's actions be pleasing in your sight. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. public safety concern locally and nationally, and homes are, are the locations where people are at the greatest risk of fire. Whereas home fires killed more than 2,700 people in 2013, and fire departments in the United States responded to more than 369,000 home fires. Whereas three out of five home fire deaths resulted from fires in properties without working smoke alarms. And whereas working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in reporting home fires in half. Whereas residents should install smoke alarms in every sleeping room, outside each separate sleeping area, and on every level of the home. And whereas Hickory's first responders are dedicated to preventing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through education. Whereas the 2015 Fire Prevention Week theme, here the week, where you sleep. Every bedroom needs a working smoke alarm. Effectively serves to remind us that we need working smoke alarms to give us the time to get out safely. Now therefore, on behalf of Hickory City Council, I proclaim October the 4th to 10th as Fire Prevention Week here in Hickory, and I urge all citizens to be alert to fire safety, including a working smoke alarm in every bedroom. Do you have anything you want to say? I just want to say, if y'all have a smoke alarm, let us know if we can get two of them. <laughs> and we've only had one fire death in how many years? Sixteen. Sixteen years. And that was a, was that a homeless person in makeshift housing? Not that, that certainly a tragic death, but it, it was probably hard for us to reach that individual. <clears throat> And I also want to recognize our other heroes, the Hickory PD, who are out in such great numbers tonight. Thank you. Okay, do we have a motion? No, persons requesting to be heard. No one has signed up. Does anyone want to be heard? 
We have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of September 15th. So moved. Second. Motion by Patton, second by Seaver. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. All members are present except Councilman Lee. Motion to approve the special minutes of the special meeting of September 16th. So moved. Second. Motion by Zagarali, second by Patton. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That's unanimous. Motion to approve the minutes of the special meeting of September 24th. Move approval. Second. Sir. Motion by Seaver, second by Patton. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That's unanimous. Motion to reaffirm and ratify on second reading. So moved. Second. Motion by Patton, second by Seaver. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That's unanimous. Anything to be removed from the consent agenda? Move it be approved. Second. Motion by Meisner, second by Guess. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That's unanimous. Recycling update, Mr. Berry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll call on uh, the city's public services director, Mr. Chuck Hanson, to uh, update council on recycling. You know that uh, we had the new rollouts, and uh, that was a very smooth process. And I'm um, going to compliment uh, Mr. Hanson, but really Mr. Hanson's uh, staff, who were so great at, uh, at getting those out. And uh, it's been pretty seamless, and now we want to see how well are we doing. Thank you, Mr. Berry. And, uh Mayor, members of council, I, I concur with Mr. Barry's comments. Uh, I did my best to stay out of the way so the system <laughs> would work. Um, <clears throat> I think Ms. Patton asked about this a couple of months ago, and at that stage we really didn't have any information to, to share and, and appreciate the excitement and the question. And, and again, we're sort of a third of the way through a year, so we'll, we'll sort of show what uh, we have, have data-wise uh, up to this point. This is a slide that most of you have seen already. Uh, we really put it out in the press packets uh, to, the, to the public. And uh, again, here's sort of what we were doing in the uh, blue bins, as we called them, um, the, the curbside sorting. And so what we've added uh, in simple, pretty much all the plastics, if you will, you can see the description of them. Obviously, cardboard is a big, everything from pizza boxes to moving boxes. Uh, whatever you, you bring stuff in the house with, that's, that's a huge uh, service to the citizens. And then fiberboard is probably where we're getting quite a bit of our tonnage because that's your, your drink boxes, your cereal boxes, mixed papers, uh, junk mail, books, uh, a lot, lot, of, lot of stuff in, in this category. So um, the next slide <clears throat> is gonna look like, uh, look, it's gonna look bad, but it's really not, it's exactly what we expected. Um, under FY 14, 15, this is the curb sorting, if you will, with the blue bins, the 18 gallon blue bins. And so what we're trying to compare is given months between essentially last year and this year. If you remember, we started in June. So this is participation rate. And it's, it's one of the measures we use in our performance measurements, but it's also a little bit, everybody counts it a little different. And in the past, what we've done is if you basically set out your blue bin once a month, uh, you were counted as being participate. You were counted as being participated, but that was a random count in, in and of itself. We didn't count it every month. This one under the single stream, we're actually counting uh, each pickup, if you will. Uh, so the equipment's a little different. It's easier to count for the driver. Keep track of yeah, no, yeah, no, and so from that standpoint, it's a really a more accurate count of what's going on. So what you've seen is where we've sort of been in the high 70s, low 80s in participation rate. We're down in the upper 60s, lower 70s, which is still excellent compared to uh, quite a bit of North Carolina. Uh, and so just, just in sort of this counting measure, that, that's gone down, which is essentially what we expected it to be. In this case, if you, you know, every other week now, if you miss your week, then you're putting that once a month versus once every two weeks, which, which some, some are doing. Here's where <clears throat> the rubber meets the road a little bit. Um, this is this is the tonnage. So here, here's where we're seeing 
seeing the numbers really count. So you can see we've, we've increased across the board here, simple numbers, 375 to 710 round numbers there. So they've gone up round numbers 90%, 89%, 90% in terms of tonnage collected. So the system is working, the process is working. I think we're hearing positive comments from the citizens, obviously. It was new out of the box. There was a little confusing which, which week's mine. I missed mine last week. So, you know, everybody's, everybody that's sort of smoothed out and moving like it's supposed to. Uh, we're, we're pleased with where we're at four months right, into the program. I think this, this is indicative of the participation rate. It's yes. Higher. Yep. Oh, correct. You've got a bigger bend to put it in, so you don't have to roll it down. <clears throat> correct. And uh, again, it's, it's uh, you know, this, this is, these are the numbers that really mean something to us. Um, the good part about this is it's about $5,700 a month less expensive than it was last year. Mm. That's cost to us by basically automated every other week collection. So we've not quite doubled the tonnage and, and we're doing it at about $5,700 a month cheaper. So over the course of the year, that's, you know, $68,000, $69,000 in terms of just uh, collection uh, that's real money. process. So that's real money. Real money. Real money. Are we to the break even point yet <clears throat> on expenses versus getting there? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm still in the I'm excited. Not a school teacher. Here's the other side of the, the coin just a little bit. This is the if you notice, the last slide was recycled product, if you will. This is, this is garbage tonnage. <clears throat> uh, we usually have sort of anomaly month in June, just the way things are somewhat counted. But again, folks out of school on vacation, so it's going to take a whole year for these to really mean something to us. But if you look at the bottom tons, we're actually sending less tons to the landfill. Uh, you know, 10, 11, 12 percent less tons going to the landfill. Um, again, that begins being real numbers for us uh, in terms of dollars. It costs us about, well, it does cost us $33 a ton to get it into the landfill. So just in, in again, a quick, a quick version here, uh, assuming this is a third of a year, if you just project that out and hope things stay this or better, then that's about $40,000 in savings to us too. So you can really see that we're getting up around $100,000, $110,000 annually in, in uh, savings with a much better environmental product, meaning less going to the landfill and things getting back in the recycle stream. But over the last year or so, markets have come down. Uh, we're getting a little bit less for the product than we did uh, a while back, but that still goes back to society as a whole using a recycled uh, product when they buy something. It doesn't have some recycled content in it. So again, look look for that on your buying end of the of the fuzzle. Um, that's it. Yeah. Quick and dirty. Questions. Do you have any projection of when they, uh, I think the um, bags that you get at the grocery store, unless you ask for paper, they give you plastic. Is there a plan or any anticipation of being able to use, recycle that? Well, and let me follow up the question. One of the things that we, we did, don't take that uh, wasn't on that front slide is essentially sheet plastic, uh, plastic bags. Again, what we, Try to explain to the citizens if we do get that question in the literature that goes out most of your stores will provide that recycling on their end so when you go back to the grocery store take the plastic bags with them with you and or get get something that's not plastic and utilize that um, the plastic <coughs> filament plastic bags uh, whatever you want to call it that type of material basically ties up the equipment the sorting equipment and so you can imagine that stuff getting intertwined in gears and if you haven't seen that it's kind of interesting to see because there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of fans magnets blowers belts uh, and so sheet sheet plastic is something that's a no-no to that so we're trying to encourage folks to take that back to the market that they purchased it in and again basically a big part of that's grocery stores uh, even even 
a grocery store plastic bag or, or a, a non-grocery store plastic bag and go back to the grocery store <laughs> recycling location. So uh, from, from our standpoint, we don't see that coming into our, <clears throat> our stream anytime soon. The other thing I'm really proud of, of the citizens, um, obviously you get contamination in recycled product. Uh, wrong thing goes in the wrong bin, wrong, wrong rollout. Um, we're hearing from uh, our, our servicer, Republic Services, that our revenue stream is a pretty uh, clean revenue stream. Hopefully it'll continue to be so, which helps again in, the, in uh, what we're sending in, but obviously what we get out of it uh, on, the, on the back end. So hopefully our, our citizen will continue to do the right thing, meaning putting the recycled product in the recycle bin and the garbage in the garbage bin. So again, if we get too much contamination in, in a scenario, we actually have to, you know, take that load to the to the landfill, if you will. But uh, but we're we're hearing very positive things about about what's actually getting recycled, meaning it's pretty clean recycled product. Mason, when you do recycle, when you start thinking about everything you can recycle, my recycle bin's full and my trash, I throw it in, and you hear it go to the bottom. It's Right. Pretty amazing. Yeah, same thing in my house, and we're seeing, we're seeing that quite a bit. So uh, again, we'll 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 see how it goes over the course of the year, and get sort of a year's worth of data. But we we sort of feel like it'll continue along the same same lines, hopefully. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. But, Melissa, I'll let you check all those numbers he was he was talking about there. <laughs> it scares me when engineers start talking again. <laughs> uh, appointments to boards and commissions. Do we have any appointments to make? Matters not on the agenda. General comments. Well, one thing we can all be thankful for tonight: the legislature is out of state. <laughs> I hope that doesn't make it to the paper. <laughs> uh, something we definitely, all seriousness, we dodged the rain. We had, we had a lot of rain. But just imagine what the people in Columbia have been going through and what they will go through. And uh, their... Uh, their city staff and uh, and all of the people in Columbia. Oktoberfest is this weekend. It should be a good time. I recommend it. Does yeah. LR play at home again yep. this weekend? Yep. Faith University. Who? Faith. Faith, Faith University. University. Well, we have faith that we're going to win that. <laughs> Sounds like a W. Uh, <laughs> But they had a huge win Saturday against Carson Newman, who's always the, they're always the toughest team in the conference, if LR isn't the toughest team in the conference. So we had a big week, big win. I encourage you to go out to the ball game Saturday, go by Oktoberfest, get one of those big funnel cones and funnel cakes or whatever. And, it's also uh, a Hickory High homecoming this weekend. Hopefully they'll get to have a whole game on Friday night. Yes. <laughs> they haven't had one this year, have they? I think they South Iron Hill, but it was away. Not at oh. They either started it on another night or they finished it on another <laughs> night. Two or three day games. Anything else, guys? I was going to ask Mr. Meissner back when he went to Lenore Ryan and they wore leather helmets. Brother, <laughs> brother Carson Newman. Uh, beat LR back in those days. Yeah, they did. I, you see their record? It was like yeah. 46 and 11 or 14 over. Yeah. 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 Ryan's got some catching up to do. Yeah, a bunch of times. Yeah. But four in a row is a good start. Yeah, it is. Well, I saw also a, a student going into Hidden House this morning dressed like a chicken. It was homecoming activity. It was Farmer versus uh, Prep Day or something. He came in dressed like a chicken. It wouldn't have made that big a difference if traffic was stopped in front of the school and people out making pictures of him crossing the road. <laughs> so, I think they were looking for the answer in the classroom today. It's a chicken crossing the road.
Because that's how he gets to the other side, right? I saw it. Wrong two eyes. Since we're on Hickory High, their volleyball, girls' volleyball team is um, undefeated. Undefeated. Wow. They beat the number one team in the state last Saturday. That's awesome. Good. Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Oh, and by the way, we, we rarely get out of here this easy. This is a, it's incredible. Bill, Bill, you've been to a lot of meetings. You ever left one every 20 minutes? No, no, this is, this is a record. This is a record. It's, it's, close. it's close. But remember, we're working y'all hard in all these other workshops. I mean, you had a two-hour well, meeting we had the other evening. Two special meetings. Two we're special going meetings. Going to workshops. <laughs> the audit, you know. Answering the phone. <laughs> the audit. We, uh, yeah, go ahead. And you, 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 you describe it in auditor terms. You know, no, no, you know, you know, you know these guys are not That's your specialty. I'll let you do that. All I can say is it's a good audit. Good audit. It was a darn good audit. That's right. Yeah, we finished our the audit's been finished, and you ought to be proud once again that our staff has done a wonderful job. And there's good news to report on the the numbers turned out okay. And so we've. Uh, you know, we got challenges to face next year and future years with uh, the devaluation and with uh, with the loss of the uh, prisoner's license. But we're going into those things in a stronger position, I think, as anybody in the state. And we had a motion to adjourn by someone, I've forgotten who it was. Oh, Mr. Meisner, Mr. Meisner, second. Is that Mr. Zager roll you second? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed no. That's you down.